Well, I'm on the streets of Townsville talking to small businesses. Well, as you know, I've had a lot to do with the cane growers and the Code of Conduct, which One Nation was responsible for getting that uh, implemented. The cane growers have had a, a tough time in getting the deal done with Wilma. So anyway, our candidate, Sam Cox from the Burdekin, he's been following this up. Um, so let's throw to Sam. Can you hear me, Sam? Pauline, yep, yep, got you loud and clear. Pauline, I've just been sitting around the table with some farmers uh, having a bit of a roundup of what's happened with the Wilmar situation uh, up here. And yes, they've now got their contracts for the next three years. Pauline, I know the growers would like to thank you and all the senators in the federal arena for all you've done. Uh, and uh, they thank me today for the fight we've put on the ground here in the sugar districts. But Pauline, at the end of the day, We've got uh, three years time, this battle is going to continue and we know Wilma is going to come back to the table harder than they've done before. So uh, they appreciate everything One Nation's done and we're going to now show you some of what they've had to say. Well, we've got a three year rolling contract. So unless uh, the miller or the growers terminate, it will roll over. So it's, it's a continuous contract. But my personal opinion is that they will terminate in the near future and uh, honestly I, I don't know if we're up to the fight because we're up against a, a billion dollar company with resources coming out of their pockets left right and centre and we're a small group of farmers trying to work our farms, fit meetings in, lobby government, talk to people, fill them in on, on the real facts and, and I don't know. I don't know what the future holds because I think they're going to they're going to keep going until they take a big chunk of that pie. Yeah, this this was all sorted quickly and in a, in a in a rational manner. It would have been a much happier outcome for everybody, but they they want to dictate terms, and and I'm glad the, the growers have stood up to the fight and protected what was rightfully ours. We didn't want to, we didn't ask for anything more. We just want to protect what we already had. I think going on from that, having a code of conduct, not, not to be against foreign investment, and I'm not against foreign investment, but for a company to come into Australia and start rewriting rule books on how we as an industry perform, um, it's totally wrong. And I think a code of conduct for all, all foreign investment companies, because I don't think you'd go to anywhere in the world where you would have a government say, oh, you can do what you like. And that's what, that's what's been, what, that's what would have happened if um, we hadn't pushed every avenue we, we could push. Farmers want to be contributors. Farmers want to pay their taxes. Farmers want to contribute to the communities. At the other end of the scale, well, then they contribute back to the major cities. We just want to contribute. We don't want to be, we don't want to be taken on at the level of someone come, someone blows into the district and said, "Look, we can nab these fellas, or we can we can challenge challenge the rhetoric on the, on, the, on the guidelines and the rules and regulations." And we don't want that. We want the rules and regulations to be fair and reasonable and quite clear. And I know it's an old thing we say, oh, "Well, we want the transparency," but that's basically what you want. You know, we want the transparency, we want, we, want to, we want to work, we want to deliver cane and we want a fair and reasonable deal. We don't want anyone coming down saying, oh, we can beat that or we can come on top of that to get a bit better deal for ourselves. I don't, I don't think there's any farmer out there that doesn't realise what he or she does in an industry like ours. It has a huge effect on the communities um, that they support. Um, I think probably people in the city, when they when they look at um, farming outside of their city areas, they they just don't realise how much um, those businesses, those farming um, practices or farming um, enterprises, have back on to the total economy. And we're all part of 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 the community, and we all do our bit to keep everyone going. The hundreds of thousands of dollars we've invested in, in getting this cane supply agreement across the line and also getting the code of conduct in place, you know, it's... 
Yeah, it's... It's money that could have been better spent elsewhere. That's right. If they just give the farmers a fair go, listen to us, what, what we need to keep our industry viable and sustainable and to keep it going forward, to bring the next generation through, to keep, to keep our young folk in the town, to, keep, to raise them as farmers. To, you know, if, if, when we have a problem, if we all just listen to this, that's all we ask. But we are being dictated to and being trodden on and, and oh yes, we hear you, we hear what's going on, and, but they never follow up on, oh, how'd you go? You know, two or three weeks later, there's no follow-up call. Um, the Libs don't get it, and I think that's what Pauline Hanson gets in spades. She, uh, she gets it, she gets the community, the community well, she gets that everything comes from the local community, and that's resigna that, that comes through when, you know, at seven o'clock in the morning, you'll get a phone call from her at eight o'clock in the morning or a staff, um, saying how can we help or where do we go with this. So that's something that the National Party used to be about and there's been a fundamental change whether that's the influence of the Libs but um, yeah that's something that you can't you can't put into anything you can't make and that's what she has in spades. If the farmers aren't bringing in the export dollar as a taxable revenue base where is this country going to find its taxation base? because I'm absolutely certain Wilmar's not going to be a good corporate citizen of Queensland or Australia and decide to cough up what we're falling short on. It'll be taxed over there in their tax havens. And it just appears to me, when you, when you ask about more development, this government isn't even focused on protecting its own revenue base, yeah. let alone the people. So is it the nail on the head. You, you... It, it, you know, Wilma don't, don't pay a, a cent in tax here in this country. If you have all these multinationals come from overseas and buying up the farming land here and farm, where's the tax dollars going to come from? Uh, there you go, Pauline. You, know, you just heard from the farmers what they've had to say. At the end of the day, if we don't do something about this industry is going to collapse and the livelihoods of not just these growers is going to be affected with the whole district, the whole sugarcane uh, towns up and down the coast. So at the end of the day, Pauline, uh, we do need to do more. Uh, and again, in three years' time, they're very worried what Wilmar is going to come back at them with. And uh, they're backing One Nation to be that voice that they need in government, both at state and federal level.